Hi, I'm Anna Denton Jones of Refreshing Law, and in this session, I want to talk about the process of entering into a settlement agreement. So, this is aimed at somebody who's been asked to enter into a settlement agreement as an employee. Um, it's a supplementary video to uh, a more detailed explanation of what a settlement agreement is um, that you'll also find on my YouTube channel. Um, so, typically, somebody will get in contact with me either by email or by phone when they've been asked to enter into a settlement agreement. They may have been referred to me by somebody else, a friend maybe, or had a recommendation. They may have searched me out on the internet and, and found me on YouTube, or indeed the employer might have given them my name um, as somebody that they might wish to approach. So the initial thing that I'm going to want to do is to have a chat with that person um, just to understand what the background is, what the story is that's led to the settlement agreement coming about. Um, at that stage you may not have a document yet, um, you may be awaiting it from the employer but we can have a general discussion about the circumstances, to what extent you're happy or not with the situation, um, to, to what extent you are in agreement with, for example, the figures that you've been offered or not. Um, some things might still be very much up in the air and I can assist by just talking you through everything that's going on and answering any questions that you've got at that stage. Now, typically there's some negotiations to be had and the extent to which I get involved in that or not will depend from case to case. Sometimes I think that if you get a solicitor involved and they write a sort of strongly worded letter to your employer, that can actually harm negotiations um, because the employer maybe is a little bit piqued that you've um, taken the matter outside to your solicitor sort of at a point that you didn't need to. Um, so it may be that I stay behind the scenes with you um, agreeing the wording perhaps of emails that you're going to send with you or helping you phrase things um, or just agreeing with you what points you need to go back to the employer with. Um, sometimes it will be me going back to the employer at that point in time. Um, that process or part of the process can actually take a bit of time and it can be quite frustrating I think when you're an individual um, waiting on the employer's response to something. I think you know, it's the most important thing going on in your life right now. But for the employer, you might be one of many people who are in that boat, or you might be just one of a number of things that they've got to deal with that particular um, day. So it can be really frustrating. Um, you know, you need to resist the temptation sometimes to, to keep chasing. Um, but essentially, there will come a point at which we get given a document that you're being asked to sign. Typically, I will go through that. I will be looking for certain things. I will be worrying about certain things on your behalf. Um, I will be spotting things that perhaps you wouldn't. And typically what I would do is having had a look at it, compare notes with you. Um, there will be things that you've spotted that you're more worried about. And we will compare notes and probably come up with a list of things to go back to the employer with. And typically I do that for you. Um, at that point, I'm either liaising with the HR department, if that's where you've had the document from, it might be a legal department if you work in a large employer and they've got their own legal department. Typically, my correspondence back to the employer is along the lines of Joe Bloggs is happy to enter into this agreement, but there are some things that we need to sort out. Indeed, at that point, we might even still be negotiating how much money you're going to get. So I will go back with a shopping list of things and explain why, might even send a marked up document if we're able to do that. And it's likely there's going to be some correspondence back and forth um, between me and HR or legal at that point um, with drafts going back and forward. 
and it might take a little bit of time to get us to a final document that we can sign. Um, again, that can be frustrating and the employer may at the outset of this given you the impression that you know you have to sign the document by a particular date or um, that's it or um, they're wanting to put you on garden leave or issue you with your notice so it's got to be done by a particular time scale um, that's not necessarily true um, sometimes there's some bullying I think that goes on of employees at that stage and sometimes it's about us sort of resisting that pressure um, and you know from my perspective yes we are going to enter into this document but we're going to do it when it's the right time when we've got a final document which we're, we're happy with um, now at the outset that might be presented to you as sort of 10 days a sort of period of 10 days to think about the document that comes from some ACAS guidance on settlement agreements which has suggested that when you make an offer to an employee of an, of an agreement that um, they should have at least 10 days to make up their minds that's about not putting people in a position of duress um, that doesn't mean that the settlement agreement has to be signed in 10 days or, or it's all bets are off. Um, it's just a guide. So don't panic too much about timescales. Um, I have known settlement agreement negotiations. I think probably the record is in months rather than in days or weeks. But if you would say what's the average kind of period that these things take, I'm probably going to suggest... 10 days something like that yes there are ones that will go quicker there will be ones that go longer but that's probably about the average once we've got a document we can sign um, we'll be looking to do that um, typically these days we're using scanners and sending electronic documents but sometimes employers will want a physical paper document as well as that it's not going to be binding until it's been signed on behalf of the employer as well. So typically the employee goes first. Um, we then send a signed document to HR with my signed advisor's certificate as well. They then send us a version signed by the company. And once everybody is signed, then the document becomes binding. And at that point, you might find that um, your employment has already ended or... Um, you are on garden leave or your employment is about to end or indeed there's a period before your employment will end it all comes down to what is agreed in the document as your termination date but until that point then there's everything to play for throughout the process um obviously i'm here to act as a sounding board um able to ask answer questions um there are obviously things that to me, to HR, are entirely normal because we're talking about this every day of the week. But if you've never been in this position before, you're likely to be worrying about references or what do you do about this, what do you do about that. So the idea is I'm here to answer all those questions.